Hey, fifth graders, we're starting our new science unit. It's called Water on Earth. I know a few of you predicted that you thought that the color of this new reader would be blue, and you are indeed correct. So what I'm showing you here right now on the screen is the uh, table of contents for section one. And we're going to work on section one partly for homework this week as we finish up our social studies project, just so we can get ready to start some more science probably um, at the end of this week and then into next week. So what I'm going to ask you to do tonight, that's due on Wednesday, is to read uh, pages four and five, and then to um, do some new vocabulary words. And then due on Friday is reading pages six, seven, and eight. This will all be printed out and in your agenda book, so double check there if you're not sure. Doing this ahead of time is going to help us so that we can do uh, more of the kind of investigation lab stuff in class. So what you're reading first is called Message in a Bottle. I wonder, I wonder if any of you have ever heard of or known of someone who put something in a bottle and put it in the ocean in hopes that someone else would read it. So let's read this page together. And again, if you'd rather read on your own, you're welcome to. Um, I ask that you think about highlighting after you read, why was the postcard in the bottle dropped into the ocean? Water's distribution, message in a bottle. In August 2015, scientists in England received a surprise in the mail. It was a postcard that had spent the last 109 years in a bottle traveling the world's oceans. The postcard is the oldest message in a bottle that has ever been found. The postcard had a note written on it. It promised a shilling to anyone who, who returned it to the Marine Biological Association of the UK. That's the United Kingdom. A shilling is a former British coin. The postcard in the bottle was sent out more than a century ago because scientists wanted to understand where ocean water moved around the planet. For centuries, people had dropped messages in bottles to study the movements of ocean currents. Ocean currents are paths of flowing ocean water that push warm and cold water to different parts of the planet. So now that we've done that reading, let's look at this question. Why was the postcard in the bottle dropped into the ocean? If we look in the second paragraph, beginning, it says, the postcard in the bottle was sent out more than a century ago because scientists wanted to understand where ocean water moved around the planet. So by doing this, they could see how long would it take to get back, who would pick it up, where would it go. So doing this had to do with understanding these ocean currents. And this is actually going to be your first vocabulary word that you're going to do on your new vocab on your new TMV. Ocean currents are constantly moving water around the planet. The movement of ocean currents is complex. It is affected by Earth's rotation on its axis. How much salt the water holds, the temperature of the water, land formations on the ocean floor, and wind. Wow, so it's affected by a lot of things in this first paragraph. Because of this, ocean currents involve interactions of different Earth systems. The hydrosphere, all the water on Earth. The geosphere, Earth's landforms, including rocks and soil and the atmosphere, the mixture of gases, dust, vapor, and other molecules above the Earth's crust. Do you remember this picture from our last unit? We talked about um, Earth systems, okay? So they're talking about how connected they are. The postcard in the bottle was found on a beach in Germany. It was one of 1,000 bottles released in the North Sea between 1904 and 1906. Slightly more than half of the bottles were returned to the scientists. The rest were believed to be lost at sea. I'm not sure why that line is there. It has, long, it has been so long since the bottles were put in the ocean that the United Kingdom no longer makes shillings. The Marine Biological Association had to find a shilling on eBay after they received the postcard in 2015. Scientists continue to study ocean currents today. However, they now use different technologies. For, for, for example, scientists sometimes attach tiny electronic tags on fish that they track where they have been. So it tells me a little bit about ocean current stopping. So these are just the first two pages I wanted you to read, okay, along with your vocab. I'm going to pause the video for a minute so I can open up the vocab for you guys. Okay, so for section one of this new reader, Water and Earth, there's five vocabulary words that you're going to be on your TMV. 
Okay, so word number one is ocean currents. Ocean currents are paths of flowing ocean water that push warm and cold water to different parts of the planet. I like this little picture because it shows the different movement of the different, of the different currents. I think in the next section of the video that you're going to read, it talks a little bit more specifically about the different oceans. Remember, if the words don't fit the same way for you, just adjust them in your text, okay? Word number two, proportion. Keep an eye on that root there, pro, right, or that prefix. The relationship between things as to size, quantity, or number. So see, these different little piggies are in proportion to each other. <clears throat> Evaporation. Evaporation, the process of liquid water changing into water vapor, its gas state. I see this when I'm making hot tea on my tea, on my tea kettle. Precipitation, the process of water falling back to earth in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Hmm. Remember water cycle from third grade? I wonder if these things have to do with that. Oh, indeed it does. Water cycle, the circulation of water through the hydrosphere from Earth's surface to the atmosphere and back. So these, I believe, is it. I think this is our five words for this sec first section of this reader. Okay. So remember, you could always have draw taken these from the reader themselves and make your own pictures, or you can use my pictures. But there is an expectation that you have pictures to go with your vocab, and of course, start to study them because there'll be new vocab to go with the other sections too. So don't forget, for the end of the week, you need to read pages 6 through 8, so there'll be a separate video for that, okay? Later on.